Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the timeline of the bold new American jobs plan. The massive push from President Biden which is uh, which is what everybody is talking about. In this video I'll give you some behind the scenes news about the timeline of the American jobs plan and when it is expected to pass. House Speaker Pelosi has some very ambitious plans in what is potentially going to be her last stint as House Speaker and she's working behind the scenes to speed up the plan and potentially make it happen by the end of the summer. This is a, this is a pretty, uh, pretty bold new initiative from House Speaker Pelosi. Let's just jump right in. Let's start with some of the major initiatives in the American Jobs Plan. And as you know, the push for clean energy has been a major initiative by the Democrats, but this takes it to a whole new level. Let's show you this headline on your screen from Bloomberg. Biden infrastructure plan targets electric cars and clean power. Sweeping climate change provisions and wind and solar tax credits would see a 10 year extension. In fact, the aging power grid in our country is a cause for concern. Here's a tweet on your screen from President Biden talking about his concerns about the aging power grid in our country. Folks, this is not only a concern from a power delivery standpoint, but this is also a security hazard because this allows our enemies to get into our power grid and exploit the power grid and potentially even hack into home devices through the power grid. This has huge national security implications, which I'm sure the White House is thinking about, but they're not openly talking about it. And I'm pretty sure that all the Democrats and the Republicans know about this. But here's a tweet on your screen from President Biden. We've seen the rising cost of our aging power grid firsthand. We can modernize it, make it greener and create millions of jobs at the same time. Now, here's an interesting tweet from Andrew Feinberg, who's a reporter that covers matters pertaining to the White House. He actually pointed out former President Trump's statement about the American jobs plan, the infrastructure plan. And here's what Andrew writes. Former President Trump, who never got through an attempt at infrastructure week without blowing up his own team's efforts, has released a statement with a lot of made up campaign style claims about President's uh, American Jobs Plan, which, which, by the way, has a lot of support. I'll show you a poll from Morning Consult. But first, let's show you the statement from former President Trump on your screen right now. And let's scroll through this statement. So it's very clear that former President Trump is not happy. Joe Biden's radical plan to implement the largest tax hike in American history is a massive giveaway to China and many other countries that will send thousands of factories, millions of jobs and trillions of dollars to these competitive nations and on and on uh, former President Trump goes you will you will get a link to this statement in the description section below through Andrew Feinberg's tweet so feel free to check it out folks sir this is a big ambitious plan and it's going to have its share of detractors whether you agree with President Trump or not that's your decision but I wanted to make sure that you were aware of his official statement in response to the American jobs plan and speaking of support, here's an article on your screen from Morning Consult, raising taxes on wealthy Americans and corporations to fund the infrastructure plan, now called the American Jobs Plan is okay, with pretty much one in every two individuals. 50% of people approve of this. Over a quarter of voters support the infrastructure improvements, but only without tax hikes. So in, this is pretty interesting. People support this, but people seem to be somewhat divided over how and who should pay for this. Now, this is where things get really interesting. This is from the Morning Consult survey more than half of voters backed the tax hikes to build and to essentially create the funding for infrastructure now this this image that you see on your screen shows a share of individuals who support improvements in US infrastructure funded by tax increases on those who make over four hundred thousand dollars and raising the corporate tax rate versus those who back improvement without tax increases now I don't know how we'll pay for all this without tax increases but it seems there are people who support so all the infrastructure but without tax increases folks i can tell you that this money has to come from somewhere there is a world in which we have massive infrastructure without any increase in taxes on the rich and that world is a very special place it's a place called la la land now what's interesting is that most people don't live in la la land as you can see on this image right here you see the portion that corresponds to all voters the 54 percent portion that sky blue color these are the individuals who support infrastructure improvements with tax increases as you can imagine a majority of democrats support that so that's 73 percent of democrats 52 percent of independents and 32 percent of republicans believe that there should be infrastructure spending with tax increases here's another interesting chart that shows us which voters are more likely to support increasing tax 
tax on those making more than $400,000. In other words, they would support taxing those individuals more than the corporate tax hike. What's interesting is that fewer than half of all voters supported the plan if it included the corporate tax hike. This is very interesting because I can assure you the Biden administration is watching public perception. So more or less, so this, this, what you see on your screen is a depiction of individuals who are more or less likely to support the $3 trillion infrastructure plan funded by a tax increase on those making more than $400,000. 57% of all, of all voters wanted people making more than $400,000 to pay more taxes. And here's what's interesting. Only 47% of individuals were likely to support the plan if it included a corporate tax rate hike. So Americans are basically saying, as far as Morning Consult is saying, tax individuals who make more than $400,000 a year. And that's more important than you taxing corporations going up in taxes from 21% to 28%. Very interesting, very interesting approach. The infinite wisdom of the American people, the infinite wisdom of our fellow citizens. Now let's shift gears to Speaker Pelosi. House Speaker Pelosi, and this is reporting from Punchbowl News. House Speaker Pelosi wants the House to pass this massive American jobs plan by the 4th of July. Now she did acknowledge that this target could slip until the end of the month, but her goal is the 4th of July. So House Speaker Pelosi wants to pass this entire plan in the next three months or so. And I want our viewers and subscribers to know that between today, the start of April, when the when President Biden announced, formally announced the American Jobs Plan and the 4th of July, we have 90 days, but we have approximately six weeks in session, six weeks for the House and the Senate to be in session between now and the recess on the 4th of July. So basically, the House has a ton of work to do between now and July 4th in order to pass the American Jobs Plan in the House. Punchbowl News points out that the White House is positioning this as temporary spending that's being paid for by permanent tax increases because folks, the spending will take place over eight years, but the new taxes will be collected over 15 years. That's what's going to be in the American Rescue Plan. So as far as Democrats are concerned, the challenge is going to be that the income is going to come in over a longer period of time because of the tax increases. According to Punchbowl News, so if a new president comes into office and Congress repeals the taxes, the pay for is gone. In other words, all these tax hikes could be repealed by Congress when another president, presumably a Republican president, takes office. And at that point in time, the money that was supposed to come in to pay for all this will no longer come in. And finally, folks, House Speaker Pelosi has her work cut out as well as the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer in the House. House Speaker Pelosi has a work cut out because Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has already said that the bill is too small and there are four, four Democrats in the House of Representatives, Bill Pascrell, Josh Gottheimer and Mickey Sherrill of New Jersey and Tom Suzy from New York have said they will not vote for any changes in the tax code if Congress does not repeal the salt caps. And in the Senate, we all know the conservative senator from West Virginia, Joe Manchin, is going to cause headaches for Chuck Schumer as well as Kristen Sinema, the Democrat from Arizona. So the Democrats in the House and the Senate have their work cut out for them. But House Speaker Pelosi has established an ambitious timeline, an ambitious timeline to pass this by the 4th of July. So that's it, everyone. The ambitious, the bold timeline for the passage of the American Jobs Plan. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm keen to know whether you think this has a shot of passing. And I've been getting a lot of viewers and subscribers commenting about whether this will include additional stimulus checks. Folks, at this moment in time, it does not seem likely, but you never know because if you've been watching my channel, 21 Democrats have been pushing for reoccurring stimulus checks and extension of unemployment benefits. But I believe, I believe that President Biden is going to try and get the framework dialed in and we may see, we may see some stimulus checks in this infrastructure package, but at this point, it's too soon to say. Right now, the sales pitch for the infrastructure package has begun for the American Jobs Plan. The critics are coming out of the woodwork and the, the Democrats need to get support in the House and the Senate. And as this gradually goes towards the end game of becoming law, as we go, as we go into the summer, we'll find out if those components are included. I will keep you posted. Thank you so much for watching. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. I would really, really appreciate that. That really helps out the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you. My name is Dr. Nitin Shoda. This right here is a little bit of information about me. You learn more about who I am 
what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter. Here's my Twitter feed on your screen right here. Follow me on Twitter. You'll be able to keep up with all the news stories I'm following and you'll be able to get breaking news in real time. Thank you so much. Again, please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.